Hello, welcome to Drinks with Ron. I'm Ron. This here's Ted Jansen. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. He's got a bad haircut, so I didn't uh, didn't think he'd want to be on the show. Um, poor Teddy here's got a quarantine haircut where things are a little tight, so couldn't really justify 35 bucks in the budget for a haircut for this little mutant. So don't make fun of him he, if he's a little crooked. His little fur face will grow out and even out in a few weeks. He'll look like a goddamn model. But I digress. <sighs> it's 11 a.m. I'm holding an old Milwaukee in my hand. I got a dog on my lap. I think it's time for drinks with Ron. He seems to agree. Um, so some good news. If you happen to watch the last episode, which I know you haven't at this very second because... My new uh, Drinks with Ron camera has not uploaded yesterday's episode yet, so it's still sitting there. But if you have watched it, you know, in future times, I've got good news. See this sweet bottom over here? All this, all this burly man meat on the cover there? Look at that. I bet you'd like to know how that sounds. Well, I left my record player with the needle hanging over the record since yesterday. And when I came down, what do you know? Goddamn thing's spinning. I'm excited. In fact, I'm so excited. I think it's time for a little pre-breakfast whiskey as well. I want some Woodford. This seems like a Woodford Reserve kind of moment. Um, I'm trying to steer kind of away from the Kentucky bourbons because fuck Kentucky. Look at the kind of people they elect. I don't need to be supporting them. Clearly, this stuff uh, does its job if you're dumb enough to put Mitch McConnell and fucking Rand Paul in office decade after decade. So my message to you is, cut back, Kentucky. You're fucking with the rest of us. And we don't have to come down there and do something about it. And that's it. That out of the way, let's bring on the sweet bottom. I'm kind of excited. Needle hits the platter. Moment of anticipation. Ron, ice in glass, slowly melting, turns the volume up slightly. Oh, let's crank that treble, huh? I'm assuming the bass is gonna be sweet. I'm most interested to know if I get a copyright violation for this. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I played uh, a mini disc and I had like Moon Funk or something on it from some band I've never heard of off of a compilation album. 30 seconds after upload, the fucking thing's flagged. I'm like, who? Moon Funk? Who the fuck? Apparently, the algorithm picked it right up, so I don't know. Sounds a little 70s ish. <clears throat> I think we're uh, looking at early 80s here. Ooh, 78. So yeah. Okay, this is right in that wheelhouse. That explains the uh, the collars and the chest hair. I might do that. I have a dance recital to go to today, you know? I think it's gonna be uh, top five buttons undone for Ron. Of course, none of these guys can match my beard, so maybe I need to go with the Yosemite Sam stash. Shave everything until I've got that going. I don't know, that was another aspect of the last album. Um, I'm gonna let viewers pick how I shave this, uh, face bush of mine. Um, I had a dance recital yesterday for four hours, which was really ill-advised, cramming a bunch of people into a building and requiring masks, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's a fucking whatever at this point. So, I learned a few things about beards and face masks. I've never had a beard this big in my life, and I have most certainly never worn a face mask that long. Yesterday, I got to enjoy the combo together, and it's most, most unpleasant. Ah. You see, which what I never knew is that when there's this much heat and you get a beard, um, it feels really weird, because you think it's just going to be this hot-ass thing that just you can't... But what happens is you must, like, sweat under the beard so that, like, initial few seconds when it sweats, your whole chin actually feels really cool. So you're like, ah, eh, I have this weird coolness in there. I, this is all right. So, I don't know. At least at this length, 
it seems to uh, kind of take care of itself. But I can't let it get too much longer. It's, it, I'm at the point it's either got to get trimmed down or we got to go full fucking Unabomber backwoods living in a shack shooting at society uh, type beer. And I just don't think I'm quite ready for all the connotations that come along with that. I think I'm already frightening young children at the counter at work. I had, uh, kids love me. Like, babies particularly love me. Anybody that's known me for a while will know. If I'm going through a grocery store and there's like a baby in a cart, and I look at the baby and even we give it one iota of attention, baby's happy. Baby's real happy to see me. They smile, they clap, and they're like, I don't know. And now, maybe I look like Santa Claus, kind of a familiar deal. Then that's one thing. I can probably scoop up that Santa Claus gig again this December. Boy, there's a job I don't miss. So if you're not familiar, on my resume, I have listed under one of the uh, uh, experiences, professional actor. That's right. I played the Jolly Fat Man, and I got paid for it which makes that an acting gig. And since I got paid, that makes me a professional. So you can parse the words however you want to. I am a professional actor. I got that paycheck. You motherfucker, get away from the sweet bottom. Were you trying to ruin my vinyl here? You think he's... He's just fucking with me lately, man. I'm, nah, I'm gonna drink some bourbon. Dude, seriously, get off the fucking vinyl. DJ Pan, set the wheels of steel, ladies and gentlemen. He needs to work on his skills. At least he's got those really soft paws on his hands. I bet that would be great for scratching. Hey, we got to get you on the upstairs record player. That's a DJ model. That's built for scratchy scratchy. And then look, we could put one on there that's not, say, I don't know, Sweet Bottom. Something I don't care if you ruin with your careless scratching abilities uh, but yeah I uh professional actor I've also uh got listed under there professional musician um 20 something years ago we played uh we played a gig at a place that was a bar then it was like a kids dance club then it was like a private party venue uh in the mix of that, we played a gig there, uh, Battle of the Bands, a couple of times. And when we got done, we received one beverage from the cooler. Well, I don't mean each. I mean for the band. The band got a Sprite after we got off the stage. But those two and a quarter ounces that belonged to me, those were payment. I'm a professional. Hey, slice it how you want. Words mean what they mean. I got paid for doing the gig. I'm a professional musician and a professional actor. That's why I'd like to get a couple bucks from this. I can say, actually, for a while, I was a professional drinker, too. Believe it or not, when I had the pants, you motherfucker, get away from there. He just keeps getting closer and closer. Like, do I step on the record? This will piss him off. Um, yeah, he's just walking right on top of the goddamn thing. Pants, you are not helping the fucking cause here, buddy. Yeah, you're fucking busted, dude. You should know how vinyl works. You've been here long enough. God. So anyway, <laughs> Mr. Pants, wide in the shot. Um, yeah, so when I had giant crazy hair, and let me put it to you this way. You see these, where I twist these up, because I'm OCD, that's why I can't have hair longer than a quarter inch. Uh, this, I did to my hair. Just unintentionally. I'd be sitting at the couch playing video games, I'd have a free hand. Half hour later, I'd look and the you know, whole right side of my head had like little tiny dreadies. And the left side just stuck up like fucking, looked like buckwheat. Um, not a good combo together. So, eventually I'd go to the bathroom and go, what the fuck is this? And then I'd have to take the rest of my hair and I'd twist them all so that at least they all matched. So I had what um, has been described as someone as Ronald McDonald meets Slipknot. I, 
hey, I, it's a decent definition. I uh, called it Sideshow Bob. I used to go by Sideshow Ron for a while when I DJ'd a couple of gigs on the side. Had a big banner here, actually, for a while. But um, we had a promotion for the radio station I worked at. It was at like some bar restaurant, or a Chili's or a, a fucking Applebee's or a Grizzlebee's or a Chichon's or a fucking, I don't know what the fuck they are no more. But it was at one of those bar slash restaurants. And I walked in, there was a couple different tables uh, where dudes had beer for sale. Um, you know, little promotion, cross promotion. Um, so I walk in and I think I decided that night I wanted a Rolling Rock. So I walk up to the Rolling Rock with my hair sticking every which away, and probably half ripped. And I said, I'll take one of those. And right as the chick's about to tell me how much I owe her, the guy standing over her shoulder, who's the distributor says, this guy drinks some for free the rest of the night. Perfect. Because think about it. You've got a product, you've got a beer. Let's say this is a green, a rolling rock and then you're at a venue with a whole lot of people for a promotional thing and in this whole sea of people you see one guy with hair sticking every which way looking like sideshow Bob whose can do you want in his hand you probably want your can in the hand of the guy who's drawing everyone's attention I was an advertising machine in a small room it was just it took care of itself so, for that night, I, my drinking was subsidized. I don't know if I was technically a professional. I got paid in beers, so if you want to argue it, um, yes, for a short span, I may even have been a professional drinker. I'd like to roll that out into a career if we could. So if you guys pass this shit on, you know, maybe break that 88 subscriber plane that's just like a fucking ceiling I can't get. 88 people, huh? Ah, what about 100? No, not, not triple digits. What if I put on Sweet Bottom and fucking argue with my cat? No? All right. Anyway, if, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to be a professional drinker, is, is what it comes down to. The professional smoker jobs are harder to come by around this area, but I think in Wisconsin that's kind of in my wheelhouse. Ah, uh, check out the keyboard. Little synthesizer action with Sweet Bottom. I'm gonna guess, uh, the guy in the glasses here is the professor and he's on the keys I could be entirely wrong but I just see it like yeah he's just face down like all sweating like he's serious about this like fucking rocking it that's what shows up in my head either way I, I got my two bucks out of this fucking album and then some so I couldn't bear to part with it in my prog rock piles though it's a sign the sweet bottom stays with me and my old Milwaukee, because apparently it's a Milwaukee theme today. Let's let's take some 70s Milwaukee's music with some 70s Milwaukee's beer, and we'll just do a Milwaukee episode. Uh, looks like Gorman Thomas over there. Huh? Is that Gorman Thomas? Is he? Well, anyway, I have another dance recital to prep for, so I should probably do that. Flip this sweet bottom, see if the record player still keeps going when I hit side two or if it just stops cold, which is my guess. I don't know. Maybe I'll fill you in. That's how we'll lead off the next episode of Drinks with Ron. Did the record player keep playing? Stay tuned to find out such intriguing facts on Drinks with Ron.